Hey Jackals, today we'll take a look how to remove unwanted objects in videos by using DaVinci Resolve. What's the catch? The catch is that you need a studio version, but that does not mean that you can do it in the free version, and I'll also show you how to do that. Now let's get digital. For the free version, you can also remove the unwanted objects, but you're limited what you can actually do automatically. In this case, I'll be using this video clip. So you'll go into the Fusion page. In this case, I'll add a merge node, and we need a polygon mask. And in this example, I'll remove this part of the window. Now what you want to do is with the polygon selected, make a quick outline shape. Then you'll connect the media in also to the foreground. And you'll connect the polygon to the mask. And with the merge node selected, we'll basically move the center X position so that we're basically offsetting the video clip. And now if I zoom in, we can see that we have an edge here and with the polygon selected to get a better view, simply click away and the polygon is still selected and adjust the soft edge. And now we basically remove the window and you wouldn't be able to tell it that this is masked away. Now this was a simple example to do because the background was not moving, but if it was, you would have to paint in every frame and I also have a video on how to do that. Now let's get to the actual studio version. I'll use the same clip just to show you how this is done. You go into the color page, then you go inside the tracking window and because we'll be applying an effect, you select an effect here. You can track forward, backward, or if you're somewhere in between, forward and backwards. So I'll just do that quickly. But before you can actually track anything, you have to click on the plus button here and move the cross to where you want this to be tracked. Now in this case, the tracking won't make any difference because the background is stationary. So you have that. And lastly, for the effects, we'll want to open them type in patch and patch replacer and simply drag it onto the clip. But you could also do this in another serial node if you wanted. All this is the shortcut, but I'll simply remove it and make everything in this node. So what the patch replacer tool does is it takes an original and you can then place it wherever you want it to be. So in this case, we actually want this to be somewhere above here and this will be somewhere up here. And as you can see, it is also indicated with an arrow so that you know which goes where. Now we have a couple of options. In this case, I don't want to use an ellipse. I'll use rectangle, shape it up, maybe like that. In most cases, you also want this original patch replacer to be as closely as possible. And then you'll also want to change in the fill method. And in this case, clone works the best. And to get rid of the window, We'll simply click here and select off. So we have some issues. So I'll simply enable this so that we can move it around. In the on-screen controls, you also have different options. You can choose this to hide. You won't see it, but you can also use auto hide. So when you click it and drag it, you will be able to see the changes that you make. So in this case, I need to have the rectangle just a bit bigger. And I'll also need to blur the edges because this edge is visible. So I'll hide it and apply some blur. And in this case, maybe I want it to blur like this. And I would actually then have to increase the rectangle by quite a bit. Now I think this result is okay. You wouldn't be able to tell that there was a window here. But now let's take a look at a different video clip. Now in this case, I also have the patch replacer and it's basically the same as before, as you can see. And I also didn't make any tracking because it's not needed if you have a stationary background. But the example that I will show you is this one because maybe it's a little bit more complex. Now let's take a look how I did that. It's pretty similar to before. Go to the color page. Let's take a look in the clip. So it's moving a tiny bit. So maybe I'll click here, position the cross just like so, and click track. 
Then I'll use a patch replacer, position the original there, and this one will be copied like so. You want to cover the shape as closely as possible. And if you don't see the shape, you can simply go to global blend and lower the blend options. And then simply increase it again. Maybe something like that. Now if I disable it, I would need to use some blur. Maybe something like that, but I do need to increase it by a tiny bit. Now this tool is decent to use, but you may have some issues if you have horizontal lines and then some angle or the camera at a different angle. So you'll have to position this as best as you can. So this is now one result. Let's see what we got. I'll quickly disable it. Now this result here is okay. Now I'll do the same thing as before in the serial node. I'll use the effects. I'll make a tracker with the power window enabled so that you can move the cross. I'll track this. This is done. I'll simply put the patch replacer on top. I'll change this to rectangle shape. Make this go over the shadow. So maybe something like that. And I think the result is quite decent. We have some issues. So I may need to also play with the border type, if that makes any difference, in this case it doesn't. So I'll just make sure that I position the windows better. So applying some blend goes a long way, and this is the result that we got. Now if you take a look at this one and the previous one that I've made, Maybe this one is actually a little bit better than this one, but that is up for debate. And the last one that I want to show you is this one. This one is color graded, but the original one is basically like this. And I removed the people here. So if you just take a look at the color page, how I did it. So the last node is the color grid. The first one is, let's see, show it. So I have the patch replacer tool like this, and I've also tracked it, as you can see. Now this video footage was a little bit tricky, because the people that I tracked were not in focus as much, so I had to track forwards, backwards, and also reposition the cross. And then for the top, I've done the same thing, and repositioned the power window as I needed to, but then I also had to go over the video to see how it actually looks like, because maybe it looked okay at this point, but once the camera panned up, I would have the patch replacer tool like this, and this is not a horizon, so I had to go back and fix it by a little bit, just like that. And that's how I can quickly, easily, and most importantly, automatically remove any object or touch it up by using the Vinci Resolve Studio. Now, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content. Leave me a comment down below if you want to see something else. And until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.